Hello and welcome to Heritage, Heritage Contractors. This is episode number four. Um, let's have a quick look at the chickens, see if they're still doing all right. Yeah, they're not too bad. I think they've got, an, they've got plenty of food. Yep, they've got plenty of food. Right, early morning and time to look, on, look for contracts. I think we're going to start running short of contracts. I've only got one, that's the field 14 harvested, harvesting of soya beans. We take it to the landmark. Just jump in the bison. And we'll head up to field 14 and go and start the harvesting. It's going to give us a little bit of a chance. We've only got the one contract. It's going to be pretty big. It's probably going to take us the whole day. So we will do... We'll show all the interesting little bits and uh, might jump cut some places. Oh, why? Yes, we, we're struggling with... Uh, might have to take that little top cover off. It does get in. It's not quite right. The yard is so tight, it's just... You've got to come in at the right angle. There we go. Do get in, but we'll we'll look at that at a later stage. Same as we need to look at taking out that uh, that trailer, the blue trailer that is behind us. The, we have to park that somewhere else. Right, let's head up to field 14. Don't think it's too far away. We've put on the sat nav, and off we go. It's not known for its speed. I haven't folded this as unfolded. I wonder if that's limiting the speed. Not really, it was just a little uphill. No, 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 no. That's the wrong way. That's the wrong way. We need to turn around. So used to going that way. Well, that's not really an excuse. I just went the wrong way. <laughs> All right, we should, we should get down to the bottom of the road here and turn left. It should be a little ways up the road on the right-hand side. We'll have to just turn off the road a little bit. Whoops. Luckily, the cars always stop for my big combine. Well, it's big compared to the cars. It's small compared to other combines. <laughs> it's vintage after all. I think we turn right just after this turn off. Yep, here it is here. Yeah. It's quite a big field. As I said, it's going to take us pretty much the whole day, which is okay because we've only got the one contract. We're looking at uh, 18,000. We should get a little bit of money in for the workers from yesterday. It's probably about 300 euros. sorted out. There she is in her magnificent glory. So 120 horsepowers, horsepowers, horsepower, top speed of 12 miles an hour, small capacity 3,500 odd liters but yeah we're not we're not dealing with huge fields but uh, a field like this is going to test it. As I say, it's pretty much at its limit at five times, take the whole day to do. And as I said, I'm not too worried about that because it's the only contract that we was probably going to get. It looks like we'll have to close up from December to maybe March. Just look after the chickens while uh, we're not going to get a lot of people coming to visit the museum and there won't be a lot of work around. If there's any work around, we will take it on. I do work in first person on this um, on this harvester, just find it easier. As you can see I can't really see the, because the, the header is so narrow, I can't really see the edges of the header. It's much better. We're actually missing a little bit on the side there, aren't we? 
I'll have to go back and correct that. I'll just hit the reverse. So as I said, we won't show you every single minute of this harvest. It's going to take up the whole episode and the whole month. But we will show bits and pieces as we go through. We'll show we'll show the um, the headlands. It's probably with a little bit of a, a time lapse in, involved in it as well. It's a fairly big field, especially for the the combine working at this pace and this width. It's doing six miles an hour. It's not too bad, but it does because of the low horsepower. It does struggle as soon as it hits a bit of a hill but it does the job it does the job very nicely I think I did mention the, uh, the use of the little steering aid on the steering wheel and why it's so important to use it just it stops it the back wheels kicking you and if you're holding the steering wheel if you're holding it in the incorrect position you can hurt your fingers quite badly actually it's working pretty well just sucking all this dust as we are harvesting it's no wonder so many farmers struggle with uh, with chest ailments later on in life well, there, there we go um, 314 euros came in that's for the workers for yesterday and we'll just put this onto a bit of a time lapse until we finished the headlands Let's see uh, two struggling along two miles an hour as we go up the hill doesn't look so bad when it's on a, on a time lapse but when you're doing it it's really crawling but uh, yeah I'm not going to complain too much about that right we're just about full our first uh, hopper load and we've only done one headland and a little bit shouldn't take too long and then we'll just nip back to the farm and pick up a, a trailer as I said the, the lucky thing is the trailer in the last episode or the episode before the the trailer just about takes the whole load so that works out quite fine just harvesting the wrong way around we should be the other way around so we've got the pipe on the outside when we're doing the headlines headlines the headlands the headline is that we harvested the wrong way around <laughs> so um we did find that the Massey was pretty slow, so I'm going to try with the higher horsepower case form um, just because it, um, it's got higher horsepower, so I think it will, uh, it will be able to, to pull the trailer much easier and at a higher speed. Not that I'm uh, unhappy with the little Massey, I do like it, it'll have its place. Well, we end up having a lot of um, vintage tractors at different places on this map as we go along and as we build up our museum. Let's just park this off here and then we'll trot on back down and go and jump in the in the farm hall. Jump straight into the <laughs> into this uh, the upright, the shed upright pole, whatever you want to call it but let's hook up and get going I think we might need to service the uh, trailer just give it a bit of a touch-up repairs we don't want to be dropping valuable uh, crop all over the place as we as we're traveling around delivering the the crop to the required destination which is the landmark I think 
grain store. Yeah, we'll just get that service. Not going to cost an earth ninety quid. No, not quid. Ninety euros. <laughs> right, down to the bottom, left, and off we go. Nice little drive up here. And in our driving endeavours, you might see as we. As we travel around, you can sometimes get a glimpse of the of the castle on the mount, mountain and the um, telecommunications tower. There we go. Well, the standing correction was near. We nearly completed to to um, headlands. Don't know why I thought it was the beginning. It was actually the end of the headland. Right, let's just put up the map just to make sure we're going in the right direction. Yep. Whoops, nearly took the citroen out. Stopped just in time. We'll just take this drive, this first drive through just to show you the route that we're going to be taking. In the future we will just jump cut, cut from the field to the, to the to the delivery points when we show that. I'm not going to show everyone. Um, that field is big and with the capacities of both the harvester and the, and the trailer there's going to be quite a few trips up here. But we'll show bits and pieces just so that you get the idea of the whole job. Right, so first one loaded off, or busy offloading. And let's see how much, what percentage we have delivered. Only 17% delivered from the first one, so... Yep, you can tell there's going to be a bit of a... Well, this doesn't turn as sharply as the Massey does. Anyway, not, not a problem. Yeah, and this, uh, this tractor definitely handles the trailer a lot better than the Massey. The Massey was doing about 9 miles an hour. So this is about double the speed, so we can't complain about that. Whoa. Really riding our luck with the traffic. And we can't be too squeamish, we've got to hope that they stop for us. These vintage uh, tractors are not the best for braking. Right, here we are, back at the field. Where are we now? We need to get to a situation where we can put the... get a worker onto the harvester. Hopefully somebody who doesn't uh, let the whole machine run away. Let's get going. Good stuff. Yeah, even the brakes on the harvester are not the best. They do tend to run, it does tend to run on a little bit, especially on a little bit of a downhill like that. But we're a bit, as I keep saying, we're using vintage equipment. working with the technology of the age as such. It's certainly faster than uh, whatever came before it. Right, I've just jump cut to... to a situation where I'm going to put this now onto a worker and we'll have a little closer look at the... at the bison as it works. We've got the Rather spiffy looking gentleman. Not really work clothes, but still doing a good job. Just get a all round view of the 
the bar's on as it's doing its job. We are going to look to in the future try to get um, a situation where we can put out straw swaths and collect straw just to bring in a bit of extra income. But that will come up most probably in the next couple of episodes. In the next it's probably in the next season when we're doing harvesting just to make, try and maximize our profits we are working with small scale equipment and small fields so the contracts are not huge values so any extra we can make is uh, is what we have to do it's going to be interesting to see how much we get with the with the, with the crop that is left over I'm hoping for a reasonable amount the base contract is 3,000 just under 3,500 so I'm hoping that will be quite a bit because of the size of the field quite a quite a sizable uh, residue as such does look good Just looks like it's done a bit of work in its lifetime, you know. That's why we like it here at the uh, at the Heritage Museum. And to keep things looking like they've done work and that they are working. So we want to be trying to use most of the equipment. There will be some that we won't use, but we will try and rotate between all the bits of equipment as we buy more. Right, let's go and jump into the to the tractor and we should have just about a full load. Oh, I'm not sure whether Well, I'm pretty sure it'll be by the time we get to the top we'll be very close to having a full load. It's a question of whether the combine is going to fill up before it needs to turn around. Looks like I'd make it. I was just hesitating there to see whether I should just wait up for it. But it looks like it's going to make the turn. Indeed it is. So we can chase the combine down and get get it to offload on the move as they say now we've got to try and match the speed going to be a little bit difficult because the, the bison changes gears quite quickly once it gets over the hill and then we're not in the position to keep up with it but it's not too much of a problem to catch up it's just that the, uh, the off the mark speed of the farm wheel is not great so I found out I found there that uh, really struggled with the, with the sudden acceleration once the once the harvester got over the top. Right, so we've got a full load. We'll head off back to the delivery point. Grain mill landmark or whatever it's called. I think we'll do a bit of a jump cut to there this time around. about there. And this should take us into the high 30%. Let's see.
It's always an anxious little wait <laughs> to see. Uh, 40%, 35% here. Yeah. So we're 17, 17, 34, yeah. It's about right. Alright, let's get back to the. Oh. It's got such a small sign. But why am I trying to turn around? Come on, man, we can. I know in other ways we can just circle around here. Stupid. Stupid, stupid. Trying to turn around and putting more dings in the tractor than they than they need to be. There's a little road just to the left here and that takes us back to the to the road that we came in on. This takes us through the um, through the animal the animal um, dealer and the straw sale point so here we've got coming up to the road no 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 you turned the wrong way again what's going on with you <laughs> I don't know why I keep wanting to turn the wrong way it's the second time we've done it in this episode alone in any case we're on the right track Heading back to the farm, and here we are back to the farm. Do another little chase, and you'll see what I mean. So we're doing okay there, and then it just speeds up, and I struggle to keep up with it. But we're not too bad. So by the time we had delivered and got back there, the harvester we had was not the the harvester's hopper was not full, so we've had to do a little bit of uh, waiting around. It's not much. It's coming up there at a nice little pace. <laughs> Spit it up a little bit. Just to uh, <laughs> make it look a little bit more exciting. <laughs> there we go. Oh, there we go. We're full. And off we go. We'll nip back and go and get the go, get it offloaded. And then we'll jump cut as we have already to the end. So we had to do a little bit of tidying up with a worker, but not as bad as the last time we had a worker on the bison. Worked out pretty well. I, the field, of course, is a, a lot easier to manage. So we've just tidied up all the bits and pieces, and we'll go and offload in that. In, we'll go and offload that into the into the trailer. Go and deliver it. And as you can see, we're getting on really about 4.30 in November so starting to lose the light it's going to be pretty difficult to do night work with the standard of the lighting on both the harvesters and the tractors but at this point in time we don't have to do it we have to see what happens in the summer time right now we're in the sort of dusk, air, dusk time and we've got lots of shadows from the trees as well so let us make it seem a little bit darker than it actually is but yeah we're still all right we can still see where we're going right let's get this last lot delivered and see if we make any money might just drive up this last this last time to give you a bit of the atmosphere of the autumnal evening beautiful colours as we're driving around and you can just catch a glimpse of the of the castle and the and the tower telecommunications tower is out to the right the trees looking great as they change colours the lighting and the feel of this map is just fantastic. I think I've probably said that before. But I've got a feeling I will be waxing lyrical about this map. Specifically for the for this um, type of series that I've decided to do on it. I do like it. I do like it.
we're just about there now. Shouldn't be too long, we'll offload. And we'll head on back to the farm, bring all the equipment back. And call it call it a day. As I said, we, we may end up closing up for the next couple of months. We'll see how it goes. But, uh, we'll know that in the next episode. Nice. Yeah, there we go. Getting some money in. 2,100. Oh, that's more than I expected. I was expecting under a thousand. Very happy with that. Very happy with that. So that makes the the single contract worthwhile, really. Because we'll get another 3,500 odd on top of that. So it's over five grand for the day's work. Of the month's work. Not as good as the last month, but I mean, that's summer months. But going into winter, that's not too bad. We've got 20 grand to see us through the winter. As I said, we're probably going to have to close up for a couple of months. But we'll still have to feed the chickens. So there will be some costs that will be involved. But I think we're about to cover that quite nicely. And then we'll have the full full range of contracts to do in the next year. As I say, we will look to hopefully negotiate some straw contracts as well. Well, taking straw off after we've harvested. I shall be uh, in negotiations with the farmers that we do the contracts for. Let's get this parked up. And then we'll go and pick up the the harvester, bring that back. It's not too far to bring back. And then we'll hopefully get our money in and uh, close up shop for the episode. Not the best bit of parking, but it'll do. Let's close the doors. Close things as we go along. Right. Drive the old harvester down. Done a good job. Hope you've got a good feeling for the for the bison after this episode. As I say, the uh, our main focus is obviously going to be on contracting. So we'll be doing lots of different little contracts, and then um, buying. Oh, look at the castle and the. In this light fantastic fantastic yeah yeah so there may be little bits of pieces of uh, of other work that we can have to do as we buy the other farms there will be some animals that will come with them and we'll have to look after that so we'll have to buy in different bits of, uh, of feed and we'll also have to uh, or sell off the animals, one of the two. We'll have to see how we go. But we'll try and get a little farmer's market going, bring in some extra income that way as well, to buy more equipment and more land. As I said, we're not going to be buying land, uh, land to work. We're only going to be buying land to increase the scope and place to put up all our bits and pieces for the museum. There we go, that's the contract 3,479. We'll get that paid into the bank account. And that's where we'll end this episode. So thank you so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please like and subscribe. It does help me. And we'll catch you in the next episode. Cheerio.